Hello firearms friends, Joel Colander here for Rock Island Auction Company. And you know, we've had some excellent collections, actually of Civil War carbines come through recently and some of them are right here next to me. And uh, we like to tell the histories, we love to tell a story and that's fun for you as an audience, it's really fun for me uh, to be able to recount those to you. Uh, but we figured, how can we make this more valuable to collectors? Like, we love keeping the history alive in our catalogs and in our videos and with our blogs. But how can we be more of a service to collectors? And we really thought, when you get items like this in, like everybody will see a lot of good, very few people will see the best. And then there's another level of collecting, there's elite firearms in the marketplace. And we're fortunate enough to have dozens of those come through in any given auction, any given year. And uh, in fact, one of them's on the table right now. So we thought, what an opportunity to be able to show Collectors, historians, enthusiasts, whether you like you know the Civil War, or whether you like Spencer firearms, we're gonna do this for several types of firearms to just try to show you grades of collecting, what you might be able to expect at some different price points, and really key in on the differences between what makes a gun good, better, best, and elite. So let's start at the bottom. Let's take one of these Spencer carbines down and really get a close-up look at it. So for our first Spencer saddle ring carbine off the rack, we're going to look at it from stem to stern just to give sort of a base level for the condition as we go up so those differences become more apparent. Uh, some people like to look down the barrel, a little tricky to get a camera down there, so we will forego looking at bore for right now. But we can start at the muzzle end still and look at our front sight and see that that's pretty consistent with our other grades. And then things that most of us look at, like the barrel and the finish. And here on the barrel you can see kind of a mixture of plum and brown finish that kind of gets a little lighter and then transitions into this brown patina more towards uh, the breech. And uh, there's actually on this particular one a very, very light Civil War era inscription on the top, which of course bumps the value more than you would expect to see on a gun of good grade, uh, condition grade. Uh, our barrel band is silvered out. We have some damage to our forend here, some chips and the like, especially. On the other end, underneath where people have tried to get the barrel band off, especially off that barrel band retainer right there. But outside of that, where the hands have actually been placed is relatively smooth, looks like pretty good wood. Uh, coming back to our rear sight, it is present. The leaf spring that's there and keeps it upright is still functioning. Even our ladder sights, our elevation sticks and stays in place for the most part. Um, very nice to see. Now there's a little damage here maybe where it's flipped the other way. Um, but by and large we like to see that. The markings here, uh, the Spencer address, mostly intact. There's been a part here towards the lower right that's been obliterated uh, just with time. And then we come back to the other thing I think most of us look at. So besides the barrel, besides the wood, now we're looking at the receiver. Uh, pretty browned out. You don't see any um, finisher case uh, coloring on this just about anywhere. Um, but for one check, so we'll put this at half cock and drop that breech. And here in some of the protected areas, we would have a pleasant surprise, I think, if I were a buyer buying a good grade Spencer, to see some of this most grayed out case color, but still there, uh, still present, still very visible compared especially to the rest of the condition of the gun that, that wasn't hidden. Uh, that would be a very pleasant surprise. And of course, it's not gunked up. Uh, everything's very smooth functioning. That's something else I would be rather pleased at were I the buyer of this Spencer. Mechanically just fine. And we'll come back, of course, to the buttstock. Oh, we do have our serial number right here. Very legible, not very rounded out. Uh, also a pleasant surprise. And let's come back to the rear stock here. Of course, we have some dings and damage beyond just regular wear and tear to the buttstock. And I think that's to be expected. Uh, surprisingly, on a good level condition, our wood to metal finish here on the buttstock is pleasantly tight. Some chips around maybe some parts of the tang. Again, but I think on a good grade weapon, I think that's uh, to be expected. Another little chip here, but again, our fit is fantastic. Uh, the saddle ring is in place. It hasn't been uh, replaced, cut off. The ring is still here. And again, some more little chips around the tang butt plate. Uh, here's of course where you'd expect to see a lot of wear and tear. Uh, a lot of people, you know, setting their rifles down. And sure enough, on the toe and heel, there's a little bit of wear, but for the most part, free of large gouges. Uh, wood to metal fit, again, pretty good. And our magazine, to, our magazine tube is, slides out pretty freely, slides in pretty freely, and locks nicely into place. So for a good grade Spencer carbine, 
I'd be pleasantly surprised about that. Now let's take a look side by side at the next grade up and see where we can start to see some of those condition differences. All right, moving from our good, we're going to move to our very good gun. Now this is what we would consider about a 20 to 39% gun. And let's kind of compare uh, side by side from, again, stem to stern and just go down the list. Now some of the differences, it doesn't become readily apparent, but as we go, you really start to see some of the differences between one stage to the next. So again, front sight's very similar. Finish also very similar. We have this gray-brown sort of modeling on the barrel. Uh, it looks like the owner of this gun was not alone with suffering with the barrel bands. That's where we see quite a bit of damage uh, is muzzle word of, the, of this barrel band on the saddle ring carbine. Um, but a lot of the wood uh, rearward of that is quite uh, bright and nice, shows good grain. A couple little dings here and there. Um, uh, rear sights, very, very similar. And here's where we start to come into some of the interesting comparisons when we get to the receiver. So our stock is still flush on both of them, but the receiver towards the top, this is the first sign of where we're, we're gonna, you're gonna hear a lot of, especially as we go up in condition, sharp edges. So the edges on this one obviously caught a lot, rubbed a lot as this gun saw service. This one, which also show, shows signs of combat use, it's just a little sharper here. And that's just one instance of where you can look on some of these, like maybe a raised surface, that would have experienced where, how sharp is that surface? How, how 90 degree or whatever degree it's supposed to be, how much of a corner or vertice does that actually come to? Uh, coming back, you can see we're still uh, a grade on the receiver, lowering that breech block. Uh, mechanically, feels fantastic. Doesn't show that uh, very nice case coloring that we wouldn't have expected to see in a good level rifle, but smooth as you please. Everything just kind of springs right back into place. Exactly what you like to see. Here, uh, moving just rearward, we don't see uh, quite as many screw heads uh, buggered as we do on the good condition. I really like the screw heads on this one relative to the, our first example. And here's another one of these sharp edges. So let's look at the rear of this receiver here, just ahead of the, sa of the, uh, of the saddle, saddle bar. And this edge right here, again, it's a raised area. It would have been proud. It would have been something that saw a lot of contact or, or friction. And sure enough, this edge is, is rubbed quite a bit and you don't notice it until you look at the one next to it and see how much sharper this top sort of scallop is. Uh, furthermore, just on the top of that, what we had what looked on our good condition to be a, a blemish or a ding. On this one, we can actually see it's a mark of an uppercase B. So things, boy, now you're, now you're diving into inspector marks and history and people who handled this gun. And boy, if that's the sort of stuff that as a collector, you can start to trace where the guns have been, what they've seen, what they've done. Uh, very fascinating. Now, uh, we talked before about the good uh, wood to metal fit. And uh, sure enough, it's tight. There aren't any huge gaps on our good example. But when you compare it to the very good, not only are they tight on the good, but you can see it's also flush. So the metal and the wood uh, flush with one another. Here on the good example, you can see the wood is a little bit proud of the tang. And so there is a, there is a difference. It's, uh, but you can see on a, on a higher condition example, not only is the fit tight around it, but the fit is also flush with their surfaces. Uh, coming back on the wood, you can see it's uh, almost a world of difference to me. Quite a bit less texturing here on the wrist. Uh, you have this nice, beautiful brown color as opposed to a darker color, much fewer dings. And here, as perhaps we should have seen on the good, but we just couldn't based on the condition level, very good. We see two distinct cartouches in the stock here, just uh, buttward of the tang. They're, uh, they're not especially deep. They're somewhat smooth, but they're distinctly visible as two military cartouches. And again, just like the mark here uh, near the scallop, exactly what collectors want to see. Uh, speaking of the wood, the edges, sharpness of edges doesn't just apply to metal. So we start looking at the comb and talk about a, a surface that would have seen a lot of activity. Uh, here, the comb and the cheek piece, if you will, this is pretty rounded, smooth, almost like a, like a plateau, uh, even on rearward here. On our very good example, it's a much sharper corner here and from the drop-offs on the side. And boy, if I told you, you know, how sharp that is versus how rounded, 
it might be hard to explain in percentages uh, or, or condition grades, but when you see it with your eyes, when you can see it and compare them, it's, it's absolutely night and day. So moving on, we're going to take a look at what you get when you move from a very good example to an exceptionally fine example. And if we're looking at this on a farther away camera angle, uh, the differences are apparent already. Uh, this is what happens when you, and, and you'll experience an, an appropriate jump in price as well from say, uh, I believe our estimate on this is uh, 2250 to 3500 Now you're looking at six to $9,000. And that's what happens when you come from a 20 to 39% gun to a gun with 90% uh, original blue on its barrel. When you have it graded as 75% uh, of the case hardening on here, but let's go from stem to stern and, and again look at the comparisons front sight proud again there isn't any uh, anything in the edges here this is just a beautiful and you have this rich deep blue all the way down to the muzzle little muzzle wear of course but wonderful wonderful that starts to uh, flake a little bit as it, we approach the breech and the wood is a world of difference you don't have anywhere near the damage that we did on our first two examples even this side of the barrel band uh, sharp e uh, eagle-eyed watchers will notice this is a Spencer Burnside the last two have been Spencer's so bear with us you will see some differences in features but for condition the comparisons will stand rear sights are still here and fantastic our markings of course are going to be quite a bit sharper deeper and more crisp here on the Spencer Burnside and boy look at that case coloring you could you could see that across the room and that's why collecting some of the really good guns gets easier you don't even have to worry about you know 25 or 30 percent or this this when they're really good they'll jump out at you when they're the best they really jump out at you but we'll get there in a minute um, again let's take a look at some of these edges here we're, we're sharper still even at the front end of the receiver uh, the case coloring of course our screw heads are all uh, immaculate uh, case coloring our top edge our scallop that we looked at before here the metal is even so good on the rear of our saddle ring we see we have additional inspector or sub inspector marks let's drop that action and see how she looks inside oh my and look at that bright case coloring oh what a treat to see stuff like that even you know 160 years later to, to be able to see stuff like that in in the protected areas but even on top of the receiver as well We'll drop that ever so gently we can flip that and very crisp perfect serial number again bright bright uh, case coloring the other sides the same it's it's a, there's some gray but there are touches of that original color you have a smooth finish now the differences are apparent even all the way back to the butt plates now we noticed this was such an improvement over our first one we still have chips here uh, we're pretty smooth but when you compare this one again to our exceptionally fine the differences become apparent we can look at the top and the wood is proud of sort of this top tang of the of the butt plate if you will and there's quite a bit of again wear on the toe and heel there's no case calling what to speak of there's some dings some dents uh, some mild pitting things you expect with wear and tear with a gun that's 160 years old on our exceptionally fine version we will see none of those issues the wood is not proud of the butt plate here on the top the screw has some wonderful niter blue these tones are actually grade case coloring and if we flip to look at the butt plate itself there are touches of vibrant case coloring on here and you can start to see what one of these looked like when it came from the factory nothing is proud everything's flush there's no chips the wood to metal fit is fantastic all the way around actually there's some a little bit here on the buttstock but even when we flip it over we're able to see other cartouches in our wood like what an example and this is exceptionally fine I got news folks it's only gonna get better and now we come to the fun part of the video going from exceptionally fine to the excellent and yes we are kind of it's not a hundred percent apples to apples here we have of course a Spencer Burnside and it's a saddle ring carbine here we have a Spencer rifle and as you can see from the length from the barrel bands from the stock there are quite a few differences between the two but when it comes to analyzing condition these are going to suit our purposes so let's come inside a muzzle to muzzle uh, you go from 90 percent original blue this is uh, now this is this retains 97 percent 
of its original blue finish on the barrel. I should mention too, when it comes to originality, this one comes with its bayonet. It comes with a Spencer rifle manual and documentation and numerous accessories. So not only has the rifle been well kept for over a century, but all the little pieces with it, making this extremely valuable to collectors. Um, our forend doesn't have much damage. You can see people didn't struggle as much with the barrel bands on this as they did our previous saddle ring carbines. Um, there's nowhere, nowhere by any of them, which is I'm pretty sure an act of black magic. Even our retaining down here, our retaining bars have this bright niter blue finish. This barrel band is case hardening underneath. This is a beautiful, beautiful Spencer in every single way. Coming back, moving down a little side by side, we have also this nice uniform finish. So while this one did retain a lot of blue, you can see there are patches of corrosion, of flake, things that have, that have taken place this over here that give it not quite as uniform as appearance. This is uniform almost end to stern. You have a little bit of wear more here towards the muzzle, but otherwise it's this beautiful, beautiful original finish uh, with this lovely brown hue. Coming to our receiver, uh, previously we had talked about edges. You can see the edges on each of these are equally as sharp. Uh, we have about 95, this is what's gonna be considered 95% uh, of our case coloring and absolutely beautiful. Our screw has touches of niter blue. We have crisp sub-inspector marks. This is marshally inspected. Uh, it doesn't have our cartouche in the wood that our saddle, rings car saddle ring carbines did, but those inspector marks are absolutely crisp and clear as if this thing left the factory yesterday. This is as issued. There's a coat of dried oil on this. I know which doesn't come across in the camera, but this gun is immaculate. When we say in our description actually for this one, this is the finest example of a Spencer rifle model 1865 that we've ever seen. And so when we're talking about elite firearms, this is it. This is the best we've ever seen and we see Spencer rifles. So let's get a look at the inside. Look at that bright color. We still have marks, extremely legible, of course mechanically excellent. Case coloring on the hammer, that's something that we have not seen on any of the previous models. This is an absolute gem of Civil War martial arms. Coming back to the wood, again we don't have uh, the saddle bar to compare it to. Well, we still have our screw in place, a, a, a slight nick in the wood. Uh, that's about all there is to complain about on this one. Uh, our edge here on the scallop, just because it's something we've talked about before. No dings, not rounded, sharp, just beautiful. You can see we had a little bit of contact here on our exceptionally fine version. No such issues on the finest version we've ever seen. The wood is also exactly what you want to see. You have that, that attractive, that raised grain, that rich oil finish that the re-oiling did here, but this is the original. But you can see how excellent a job somebody did on our exceptionally fine version to match that original finish. And now let's flip it just ever so slightly and take a look at that butt plate. And the butt plate, while it doesn't have that splash of case coloring uh, like our exceptionally fine example did, there are no, now maybe this isn't a surprise, given the condition of the rest of the gun, but there's, there's no wear. Like nobody has set this down on its butt. These edges are pristine. There's no gouges, there's no cuts, there's no dings in this edge. These edges are as sharp and beautiful as it gets. And it makes sense, the stock coming back to it is as sharp and wonderful as it gets. Um, now that I'm able to hold it like this too, I can see uh, the top of the action. And we can compare that case coloring comes over the top. Everything is crisp and wonderful and legible. These markings are fantastic. This is exactly what you want to see in elite level Spencer rifle. Well, firearms friends, I hope it was educational. Whether you're into Civil War history, Spencer's, or maybe just how we grade and price things here at Rock Island Auction Company, I hope it was a little bit of an insight in what you can get from good to the best we've ever, ever cataloged from 2250 to 3500 to 16,000 to 25,000 and what you can expect at your collection, in your collection, and what you can expect to see on your Spencers at those different price points. We hope it's educational. We hope it's something that we can provide uniquely uh, because we have these in-house and, and we can in turn present to you. Thanks for watching everybody. Subscribe. Let us know in the comments if you want to see more types of videos on these beautiful Civil War carbines. And until next time, keep your powder dry.